Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world. I'm Michael Anthony, author, speaker, coach, and advocate for adult survivors of childhood trauma, and you are listening to the Michael Unbroken podcast. I came across a post the other day that really made me think about stoicism and the power that it plays in recognizing the things in life that we can and cannot control. And then I remembered about this book called The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday, which if you're watching on video, which I am on YouTube, hang out with me there, um, I'm reading right now again. And I came across one of the quotes from Seneca that I'm going to read to you. Many are harmed by fear itself, and many may have come to their fate while dreading fate. There's something to be said about the level of paranoia that exists within us as trauma survivors and how, on one hand, it is totally and incredibly reasonable, and on the other hand, it's likely tearing your life apart. And I posted something a few months ago that went semi-viral, and I said something to the effect of that not everyone is out to get you. And I want to dive into that here, because I think this is a really important conversation to be had. So often, we come from these backgrounds of trauma and abuse. We learn to distrust. It comes by honestly. We look at our life in the frame and the scope of understanding that every time that we stepped into vulnerability, there was a ramification or pain or suffering or hurt. And thus, paranoia became, for lack of a better way to phrase this, because this is my experience, It became a defense mechanism to keep me safe and protected. Being a little bit paranoid can actually be the difference between life and death when you're in a traumatic and abusive household. And that was my experience. It was always walking on eggshells. It was always being scared of being myself. It was all of these things, which I'm sure that you've experienced. And that played roles, right? And I think about the level of paranoia that probably saved my life multiple times as a child, not getting into cars with strangers, not putting myself into precarious situations by taking things people give me, by not eating certain Halloween candies, right? And then as a teen, that started to transmute into, okay, if I'm going to go into this building, maybe I need to make sure I have some kind of protection with me. Am I with people? Am I safe here? Are the decisions that I'm making in line with keeping me alive? And thinking about that level of paranoia as something that was really, at its essence, about survival. How do I measure my environment to look at it and know whether or not it's safe to cross the threshold from the moment that I'm in to the moment that I could be in? And then looking at that and and now having the words for it, which I think is really important. At that time, it wasn't. At that time, it was just gut intuition. This doesn't feel right. Am I sure about this? That person looks shady. Maybe I shouldn't trust them. I don't know about that drug. Do I want to drink this drink and then drive? Whatever that was, right? Some of it, it was just a little bit of self-care, but a lot of it was being too scared of the backside to be willing to step into it. Now, what's so odd about that is on occasion that made a lot of sense and I would do that. But then on the other occasions, I'd be breaking into people's houses and stealing their cars. And so, you know, sometimes survival actually begets survival and it it gets complicated. And then you're an adult and you're looking at the world through the scope of an adult and everyone cannot be out to get you. The truth of it is, and this is a hard thing to palate especially if you are in a position where you felt like the world is out to get you, which again, you come by honestly. I'm not taking that away from you. I'm not shaming you for that. I'm not saying that you're a bad person because it's fair. For no other reason than you have evidence to support the hypothesis that you should be afraid of humanity. But the question that I have for you right now is how is that serving you? In your moment, In this life, in this season, whatever you want to call it, how is it serving you to be paranoid of the world around you? Now, a little bit of paranoia goes a long way, right? There's still things that you have to be cognizant of. Unfortunately, the world does have bad people in it who make mistakes. 
right? You do have to be aware of that. You have to be safe. You have to be cautious. But is everyone out to get you? Is everyone in your life truly out to get you? And this is a hard conversation to have with yourself because it may feel like that. Every time something doesn't go your way, every time someone says no, every time the relationship ends or the job goes away or whatever that thing may be, it's easy to leverage, man, I was right again. Everyone's out to get me. And I think about how I can actually turn that on its head and think about what it means to look for, for lack of a better term, silver linings or lessons in those moments that disprove the hypothesis that I believe that everyone is out to get me. And so how do you do that? I think it's difficult. Actually, I know it's difficult. I don't think I know. It's very difficult to put yourself in a position where you're measuring whether or not people are going to try to hurt you versus the experiences that you've had versus the experiences that you want to have. And by sitting with it, I think the best thing that you can do is reflect and look at something that's occurring in your life that you would normally say, aha, this person's out to get me. I have the right to be paranoid. I have fear, right? I have fear about this person in the world or the way that they're acting or whatever that thing may be. And again, this is so contextual. I almost didn't even want to talk about this because context plays such a big role in this. But as you step further into this journey, you're going to have to get more self-aware. And by getting more self-aware, you're going to be able to evaluate the truth of hypotheses that you have about the world. And you do that by either having them proven or disproven. Are they true or are they untrue? And I think there's a lot of space where being binary makes sense, meaning it's either cut and dry, yes or no, and where it doesn't. And so context, my friend, you have to err on the side of, because without doing that, then you're really losing the opportunity to learn about yourself here. And so as you're in this moment and you're looking at and measuring, did Sally, did Bob, did Jim, did whomever intentionally ruin your life, thus they are out to get you? Or is there an opportunity to learn something about yourself, the way you behave, the way you think, the way you act, the way you feel, the way you respond? And more importantly, ask yourself this. In these moments in which you're making these declarations, someone's out to get me, then is that paranoia based on your sympathetic nervous system being completely out of whack? Are you in fight or flight? Is your, is your, excuse me, is your amygdala out of whack? Is your hippocampus out of whack? Is your cortisol spiked right now? Can you not make intelligible choices and decisions? If you stop and you breathe and you pause and you gather yourself and you really think it through and ask yourself, is this person out to get me? I believe that you will find most often that it is not. And thus you can unprove your hypothesis. But you have to be willing to measure the reality of that maybe somewhere in there, the mistake was on your side. Now, look, this is not a place to play blame. You know how I feel about this. I don't ever push towards creating blame for people, only responsibility and only understanding. Now, how do you start to build that? How do you really truly get to this place where you can acknowledge that everyone's not out to get you? It comes from experience. It comes from everything in the same way that everything else works. You have to learn it. It has to be a part of you. It has to be something you see, feel, hear, experience on a daily basis again and again. I look at overcoming the sense of paranoia in which it's detrimental to our lifestyle in the same that I do as reframing everything else that we experience. How do you create a new understanding of who you are, even though and again, we understand this, that up till this moment, you are informed by all the experiences that you've had. Well, you have to look at a couple of things. And, and I'll give you my case scenario. First, I had to measure, am I really giving this effort, whatever that thing was, whether it was a relationship or a job or a work and thing or, or, or friendship or whatever it was, I was always measuring and taking into consideration, am I actually showing up with effort? Do I have intention? Do I have clarity? And if not, then why am I being surprised of a negative outcome on the backside? 
right? I think often we look at the negative things that happen and we measure those as the cornerstone for whether or not it is right that we should step into understandings of other people with fear. Because immediately we look at this scenario didn't go my way, thus someone must be out to get me. Now I'm fearful to ever do this again. That doesn't necessarily always hold true, especially if you measure yourself first and ask, am I really giving this the effort that it deserves? Did I really show up? Am I really living in line with my wants, needs, interests, values, and principles? And if you aren't, then the measure kind of changes. And it's like the quote that I read. If you are constantly enamored and absorbed with the fear of that someone is coming to get you or out to get you, I think that you're taking away from your own existence. You're taking away from your own human experience because there has to be a space for hope and for possibility. And I think the only way that you move into those spaces is by being open to the fact that sometimes it's okay if people are on your side. I know that's hard to hear. I know that's a hard thing, especially to experience and to feel or to see or to understand. But not everyone is out to get you. And a lot of people want you to be successful. I'm one of those people. The reason that I make this podcast, the reason that I wrote the book, that I coach, that I do all the things that I do is because I want you to be successful in your life. I have seen and understood that place where it doesn't feel like the possibility is there. And I've been on the other side of it and recognized how to get there, right? And so I built the roadmap. I'm not the only person in your life who wants this for you. There are multiple people. And sometimes you have to pause and look at them and literally identify them and say, does this person want me to be successful? That doesn't mean that they're going to help you. Let's be very clear. I don't know that anyone is like required to help you on your journey. They may be willing, which is beautiful. And I hope that they are, right? But they're not responsible for it. The only person responsible for the things that happen in your life from this moment forward is you. And you can be responsible for having hope in the idea that people aren't out to get you. Now, I know what you're saying. Michael, I don't believe this. I've been in so many scenarios where it didn't go my way, where somebody got in my way. Somebody did a better job. Somebody did a worse job. There was this, there was that. There was cheating boyfriends and girlfriends and partners and husbands and the kids did that and the dog did this thing. Okay. So what are you going to do about it? I think that's the question that you have to ask yourself. What are you going to do about it? Because often some of this is a self-imposed imprisonment. Some of this is a self-imposed imprisonment where you look at your life through the scope of negativity across the board, no matter what, there's always something bad or dark. And until you start to change that, and I've talked about this in previous podcasts where maybe it's through gratitude or through working on a project that brings you happiness or whatever that is, until you start to build that place within yourself, you are only always going to see the negative in people. And so that's why I started this episode of the podcast the way I did, because I want you to recognize that not everyone is, in fact, out to get you. It is fear that consumes you. It is being in the vortex. It is being in that place where it feels like the world is against you, that you are stuck. So much stuckness comes from the lack of belief that we have that the world is safe. And it's true. It's hard. The world isn't always the safest place. The world definitely isn't going to always care about you. But some people in your world, as defined by you, will and do. And your job is to figure that out and to leverage them and to be in connection with them and to acknowledge the fact that it's okay that they can be on your side. And just like me and so many other people who are in this space right now, the only thing that we care about is, can we give you the tools to get there? And so I think that if I'm going to leave you with anything today, the number one tool that I will give you is to have a moment of inward reflection and pause, which this is so important, and not immediately make assumptions when bad things happen. Because unfortunately, Bad things are always going to happen. Now, that's something that you have to define what that word means and how those things exist within your life. But on the backside of it, is there space for you to look at it unbiasedly, without shame and without guilt, and just say, did I show up? Did I do my best? Did I make a mistake? 
Was there room for better communication? Could I have addressed it in a different way? A lot of this journey is about personal responsibility and showing up for yourself. And if you want to be the hero of your own story, you're going to have to understand that you're not going to be able to do it alone. And, you know, maybe Bob did a better job at work than you. That's why they got a promotion. Maybe you weren't showing up in your relationship how you could have, right? There's so many things. And again, this isn't about shame or guilt. It's simply about acknowledging because I've been on both sides of it, right? I I think we all have. We've been in these moments. But the difference in whether or not you're going to find success in life is really within the pause. It's in the timeout. It's in the looking at it unbiasedly and just saying either yes or no, I didn't do the things that I could have done. And look, realistically, I'll lay it like this because I don't want to leave without saying this because I think it's really important. If you truly believe with empirical evidence that your hypothesis that someone is out to get you is true and you can prove that and you actually can sit there and you can prove it and you can go, this is how I know. And then on the backside of it, they back that up through behavior, through action, through choice, through decision, through what they say or how they show up. And if you can sit with that, then you need to remove that person from your life. Now, that may be your boss. It may be your partner. It may be your best friend. I'm, I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. It may be one of those people, but it also might be you. And in that moment, you have to ask yourself, how can I create the life that I want to have while I have evidence that my hypothesis is true? And that means showing up for yourself. That means personal boundaries. And that means doing the hard thing by changing your environment. So I hope this was a helpful episode for you and not too convoluted. Honestly, I wasn't sure I was going to dive into this one, but I felt it really necessary, especially because I read that quote today and I wanted to share it with you guys. Look, I know it's hard. I know this isn't the easiest thing in the world, but do know this. If you take nothing else away from this episode, you are not alone. And there are people, myself included, who wants you to succeed. My friend, thank you so much for listening. Please do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Until next time, my friend, be unbroken. I'll see you.